What is your favorite way to eat potatoes? Tell me in the comments. What's your favorite way to eat potatoes? Like that with your teeth? Whoa, careful, careful with that. All right, I'm gonna set this aside. What's your favorite way to eat potatoes? Mashed potatoes. What about you, Daddy? Roasted. Roasted. I love French fries. <laughs> All right, we have. I love French fries. I love it. I love it. Hey, I'm Amy Landers with Gardens That Matter, where we help families create beautiful, bountiful gardens together. Come sit down so I can tell you a potato story. And I've got a potato story for you. Remember? Okay. So. Here we are live. I, what did I say? I'm Amy, Gardens That Matter, families, beautiful, bountiful gardens together. This week we've been doing kid-friendly videos and I've done some light editing, but this is live. Here we are. So no editing, but we're gonna show you one way you can grow potatoes. All right, you guys ready to hear about a potato? Yes! Okay, sit down, sit down, sit down. Okay, so when you plant a potato in the ground, if we were planting this one, we would put it underground. Oh man, you got dirt on you. Let's get that shovel away from Parker. Okay, let me have okay. the shovel. Let me hold the shovel. You can, you, you, you can have it in a second. Maybe I'll tell you all Sit the down. story. Mom's telling you a story. All right, so when you plant a potato underground. Here, come here and I'll help you dust you off. Okay, so when you plant a potato underground, it's going to be a few inches underground, like eight inches, six, eight inches underground. And then typically you heal them up. And that's because the potato will grow a stem and it'll grow up from here. And then all along that stem, so let's pretend like this is the potato stem. It's not really a potato stem, right? It's really grass. But all along this stem, there'll be little baby potatoes. And so when you grow them outside, you heal it up to cover the, the, the new potatoes. <laughs> if you do that, you will not get any potatoes. Where did our thing go? All right, so here's our potato. There's all our babies. Oh, we don't have any potatoes now. But one of the things you can do is when you grow potatoes in a container, you can grow them in a tall container and keep covering them up as they grow. And with any luck, at the end of the year, you can just tip, tip over your potato bag and you will just have a bag full of potatoes. Not literally, completely full, but um, it's an interesting way to grow them. So if you have a small space, this is a way to grow them. So I learned this approach from Mary Zemak, who's a permaculture her permaculture guru in Los Alamos, New Mexico. We visited her house and she did this and she did it with big black plastic bags. She would pick, there's some dirt. Hey Emerson, Emerson, either sit down and listen to the story or stay over here and play with the dirt until it's time to fill the bag. All right, so Mary Z. Mac had big plastic bags. She would go collect people's fall leaves around town, cut a hole in the bottom and put those bags um, inside of a wire cage to support them and then grow the potatoes right in the leaf mold. She would add some compost or some soil to help hold water, but the leaves, once you get them pretty wet, hold water really well. Um, they had decomposed for a season, so they were already leaf mold. And so she would grow the potatoes right in there, and as they grew, she would add another bag, more, another bag around the outside and more leaves on the inside. And then at the end of the season, she would open up that wire bin and uh, take apart the, get the plastic off, and then have all her potatoes in there. So we are gonna use some feed sacks because we've got a bunch of the feed sacks around, um, and they are small enough that we can move them. We're actually filming like in our little front yard because it's close enough to the wireless to be able to do this. Um, so we're going to use these and then we can move them to the backyard where we have the rest of our, our food um, and, and see how they do. This will be a fun experiment. Um, you could also use a garbage can or a five gallon bucket and drill some holes in the bottom or even just a large planter. Uh, you do want to be careful like if you used a large clay planter because at the end of the season you either need to dig it out or tip it over to dump it out. Um, and so you don't want it to be so heavy and bulky that you can't dump it or, or something that would break. Um, but this is one way to go. Thanks, Dad. Okay, let's get this guy full. A worm, don't put him in the bag because he won't be able to get out. Let him be in the, can you put him under the leaf? You can show the camera the worm. Hold him up, let him dangle down. Wormy. Hi. 
Okay, so set that guy down. That's heavy, huh? So we've got two filled up. You're going to start with about six inches of soil. You can see why I might do a little light editing. Okay, grab. All right, I'm ready for soil. I'm ready for soil. I'm ready for soil. Put some soil in the bag. All right, you can do the big shovel in if you're being careful and not silly. It's behind Dad. Okay, go get some more. Go get another scape, but watch out for Emerson. Here, you go this way. So Emerson's coming around this way. You go on Parker's side, but don't get him. Whoa. Nice. All right. So we pulled this soil out from where um, we've dumped leaves in the past. So it's really nice, rich soil. It's got some leaves mixed into it. You could use... Whoa. You could use a potting soil. You could just use soil from your garden. All right. Whoa. This is intense. This is some hard work. You guys are going to be hungry for dinner. All right. A little less throwing, Ollie. A little less throwing. <laughs> Try to get it in the bag. Don't throw it in there. Don't throw it in there. Okay. Ollie's done with that job. No, pick it up. Okay. One more scoop full, and that should be enough. Especially if Ollie would put his in the bag instead of throwing it. Yeah. That's what I like. Yeah, nice. Careful move. Right All right. And you got more control over it. Nice work, Em. We should bring your little shovel over. It'll be a little easier, huh? But that moved a lot of dirt fast. Okay. Now, each of these bags is going to get two potatoes. Each potato needs um, probably about two and a half gallons of space. So, like, two potatoes in a five-gallon bucket. And so you can just Yay. set them right here. So we can show the camera. I'm getting the potatoes. And then once we get the two potatoes in. These are squishy. They are a little bit squishy. I'm the moody. Okay. Now we're going to cover them. Thanks, Ollie. Ah, oh, we'll put three potatoes in. Let's see how they do. Okay. Check that one in. Oh, good. Now let's go over here. All right, four in that one. Fabulous. You want a potato? There you go. Thanks. Okay, now we're going to cover them with soil. That's enough. That's enough. Uh, we had some extras. That we don't. If we put too many in, they'll be too crowded, Ollie, and they will be too. It'll be too many potatoes. Huh? Let's put these in here. We're going to feed the extras to the chickens. Oh. Oh. All right. So now we're gonna fill them up. Maybe Dad, you can maybe help with this part. We just... <laughs> okay. So while Dad and the boys are doing that, let me tell you about getting potatoes. So you could totally use potatoes that have sprouted in your house, in your pantry. Um, those are, will potentially be. You could try it and see how it goes. Um, if you are serious about growing potatoes, you probably want to look for seed potatoes. And seed potatoes probably won't be this far long sprouted. Um, they'll be about that size, and they'll have one or two eyes on them. And so those seed potatoes have been grown specifically for planting. So those are growers who are, they can know that they're um, blight free or other fungal diseases. They, know, they can kind of certify that the potatoes are in a good place, a good starting place. Um, and so, if you just bought potatoes at the grocery store, then they might not sprout. So not all potatoes sprout. Sometimes they've been sprayed with like a growth inhibitor. Uh, so you wanna um, look for either, you could use some potatoes if you have like some, some organic or non-sprayed potatoes that have sprouted. You could try with those like we're doing. Oh, careful, hey, em, Emerson, I want you to put the shovel down. I'm going to go ahead and get this shovel. Thank you. This is cool, right? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Bring it over here. We'll so, when you're, you're gardening with kids, it's important to understand tool safety. And uh, obviously, we need a refresher about shovels and not swinging them around. So, hey, Callie, how are you? Do you guys grow potatoes? <laughs> We're planting potatoes in these containers. And so now, I need to tell Colby to stop filling the containers. Okay. Said fill them. I, did, I didn't mean to say fill them. I said it wrong. Right. I meant cover the potatoes up. All right, so let's 
to recap. So six inches of soil, put your potatoes in, seed potatoes. If you have bigger seed potatoes and you cut them, you'll want to let them dry. You might even sprinkle, put um, sulfur around them to prevent any kind of fungal disease. Not required, but you just let them want to, want to let them sit out in a cool, dry place for 24 hours before you plant them. If you cut a potato, if it has multiple eyes, you could cut it and plant both pieces. All right, six inches of soil, put your seed potatoes in, and then I'm watching them in the video now. There. All right, probably you're done with that shovel, dude. No, no. This is beautiful soil that we can put somewhere. I'm sure the yard would enjoy it. The yard will a little fertilizer for the front yard. All right, so then you're going to cover those potatoes. Now we're going to move these to the backyard. We'll water them well. Use a container that has drainage. So if you use a feed sack that doesn't have holes, you'll want to like poke holes in it. Uh, and then as they grow, we're going to keep adding soil. So I misspoke earlier when I told Colby to fill them up. Um, I, I meant to say, cover the potatoes up. And then now that the potatoes are covered, um, we'll let them grow. They'll, they'll come up. We'll have greens. And then as the green plant grows, I'll unroll the sack. Or if you were using a plastic bag, you would unroll the plastic bag. And I'll keep adding a mix of soil and uh, soil and leaf mold. And depending on uh, where you live, you may need more soil, you may need more leaf mold. Potatoes need to stay, have, they need plenty of water. If they dry out, they're not gonna produce as well. They also like to be cool. So these white bags may work well for us. They may reflect some heat. Um, we probably will put them in a place where they'll get afternoon, like shade from shade in the afternoon from the western sun, so that there won't be like sun sh beating down on them. Um, it's one of the reasons, like usually you grow potatoes in the ground because the ground stays cooler. So that's something we have to think about when we place these. Uh, but then as they grow, we'll just fill them up, and eventually we'll have a full sack of soil and leaf mold and potatoes with like a lovely lush green potato. So we'll come back and revisit them later this summer and see how they did. Uh, but Miss Mary Zemack in Los Alamos had wonderful, uh, wonderful potato harvests from hers and she would tuck other things in there too, tomatoes and eggplants into basically a, a compost pile uh, with all that leaf mold. So, all right. Uh oh, what's that? I bit my tongue. Oh, ouchers. All right, well, we're going to go take care of a bit, bitten tongue. <laughs> All right, say bye. Yeah, there they can see it. Let's go take care of that. All right, have a great night, and we will be back tomorrow, probably with a, light, a lightly edited video for you tomorrow. But thanks so much for watching, and until I see you again, happy gardening.